Now, Mark McGowan's indefinite border restrictions continue to cause a world of hurt for his state and sadly, it looks like these excessive illiberal restrictions will cause tennis champ Matt Ebden to miss the birth of his child. After reaching the men's doubles finals, Matt Ebden, a fully vaccinated Perth local, is being forced to spend 14 days in quarantine away from his pregnant wife, Kim. He joins me now from quarantine. Matt, this will be your first child. How important is it for you to be by your wife, Kim's side during the birth? Well, I think um, you could ask probably any mother or father out there um, or any couple, you know. it's uh, It's been tough. Uh, obviously, about four weeks ago when I went over to over East, you know, for the, for the lead-in tournaments in Australian Open, I sort of asked my wife and, you know, she was almost eight months pregnant and it's a tough time. Any, anybody will know it's, uh, you know, mm. there's a lot of medical emergencies that can happen in that last month leading into the birth. And we made a tough decision that I would go knowing that I could return on the 5th of February. I, I had a flight booked and paid for. And, um, you know, we decided that that was a pretty good hedge of, of time that I would be able to get back. And... It was still sort of pushing it. You know, anything can happen uh, with, with the birth mm. of a baby. But, yeah, we made that decision. We said, OK, I go and I do my best for, you know, myself, represent Australia as we always do, and and I'll be able to come back when the border opens. And then, yeah, mid-tournament, um, you know, that press conference obviously happened and Kim ended up in tears and <laughs> I was trying to uh, mm. prepare myself and try, and try and play matches. And, yeah, it was a very tough week or two. Well, yeah, you have that hanging over your head. You were expecting to be back by 5th of Feb. That was the border reopening. And then you have Mark McGowan doing this backflip. Uh, how's your wife coping now? I mean, is there any hope that you'll get there in time? Or I, have, have you just resigned yourself to, to not being there for the birth? Yeah, well, yeah, I literally slept for two hours after the final, got, got up at 6am and went to the airport and took the earliest flight I could so I could get as fast as I could into a hotel and begin my quarantine. So yeah, I have 14 days of quarantine. It's it's actually 15 days. The day you arrive is day zero. And then it's another 14 mm. from there. So so-called 14 days quarantine that they talk about. It's, it's a 15 days quarantine. And that takes us basically to the date of the birth. Uh, the due date is around either 14th, but the baby is a little bit bigger than average and probably going to come in the week before that. And I will be yeah stuck in quarantine myself, so I won't be able to take my wife to the birth. To you know, if she goes into labour, um, I won't be able to take her to any of the appointments this week, next week. And but at the very least, from my hotel room, twenty stories below, I can see her from the street. <laughs> oh yeah, that's just oh I feel for you because it's it's an experience that is once in a lifetime and you're fully vaccinated. You probably were willing to do as many rat tests and PCR tests they want you to do. And yet these restrictions are... And, and you've got people in your team as well as friends who are stranded in Melbourne after the Australian Open. Do they know when they'll be allowed to return? Uh, some would say you're one of the lucky ones who's, who's in hotel quarantine. At least you know exactly. you'll get out eventually. Exactly. I, I was very fortunate even to get a G2G pass um, on the compassionate grounds with a medical letters and medical exemption. And otherwise, I wouldn't have been able to even come back until the 5th of February and then do another 14 days quarantine. So that's what my other friends and physios and that in Melbourne and well, every, everyone in the rest of the country are stuck with. It's not just me. I'm not I'm not somebody special. I'm not asking for special, you know, special treatment as an athlete. I'm not I'm no different to any other Western Australians, Australians. Even when I arrived here at the airport, um, I, you know, a, a lot of the other passengers, even the even the cops, even the security guards, they all said, oh, well done and we support you. And look, we all think this has gone one too far. We, you know, we were all sort of happy here in WA for a while, but now this decision is just one too many. And you know, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, if not millions of, of Western Australians and Australians have, have suffered. And I've seen it in the news. I've seen it in, you know, personal 
um, conversations this last year or two. And it's, yeah, many, many have suffered. And I think surely it's time we, we get on with life. The, the rest of the world, the rest of Australia has moved on. Everyone's gone and got vaccinated. You know, that was the whole push this last year was, no, no, we're going to wait till we're 70% vaccinated, then 80%, then 90%. And now we're well over that. You know, basically everybody is vaccinated. Everyone's done the right thing. Everyone's done everything they possibly could to get to this point. And then to just be told, mm -hmm. oh, sorry, no. Um, you know, how do you, how do you feel? Uh, it's, yeah, it would be so frustrating and um, I'm going to keep my fingers crossed for you. I can tell you uh, I had a big baby as well, a 10-pounder, and he ended up being a couple of weeks late. So okay. there's still some hope that you will be yeah. there in time because I know <laughs> it's how important that is. Matt Ebden, thank you so much for joining me this evening. Thank you very much. I'll keep saying my prayers.